Hey guys, it's Chris and we're back with something else Amiga. Mr. Ricardo, the owner of the Titanic board, has sent in yet another 2000 board to be checked out, replaced, but he's also included a couple of different special things for me to check out. Starting with this. So starting with the first thing, this is a PC Emulator 2000 for the A2000 from CBM 1986. So she's an early card. Even has the cap fix done in the back. Very cool. There was a couple goofy fixes that were done post-mortem here. This has a 19... I have two pair of glasses on, yes. This has a 1978 8088 processor in it. Incredible. It even has the slot for its coprocessor. She's rocking at 16 megahertz. Cut that in half. That means you're rocking about 8. Uh, has a MOS 5718 like a Southbridge, I guess, and a CBM uh, 1987 TC17 Geo 32AT. Cool. It is rocking the original 1988 ROM for the 2088. This is really neat. Looks like it probably has a meg or so of RAM. I don't know. Uh, yeah, they're 256K 16s. So it has like 512 megs of RAM, or K of RAM. And this comes accompanied with, but this is the floppy drive, the five and a quarter inch floppy drive for the emulator side for the PC. Uh, naming brand, it is a Chinon FZ502. And that's about 300K. It's not gonna be your higher density 720s or whatever. Back in that day, she's drier than the Sahara Desert, so we're gonna have to looby dooby up all the rails clean all the heads out and take the board off just to make sure what's going on. This is not the old tape player kind. She's all electrically driven so no belts to worry about turning into mush. Not only has Mr. Ricardo been so generous in sending stuff to me to take a look at, I just enjoy repairing stuff and I like the challenge. Some of it can be pretty hard at times but usually it's, it's successful depending on the level of damage. Uh, the Titanic, as you know, before it was a rusty mess, cost me a CIA, about 50 bucks worth of stuff, but that's okay. I do this for fun, and you know, just to make sure these things live again. So this is the Queen Mary, I guess, and the blue tape is optional. I'll call this one the Queen Mary. Why? Because she's gilded with gold. Uh, this has been, I don't know if this was battery damage, but we're going to go with the similar shade of a yellowish pea soup green for solder mask when we're completed. Uh, we have the whole VCC bus exposed as well as the ground plane RTC, your mom. And we're going to have to go through this one. This supposedly works. The sockets were just removed and I need to check a couple of the vias because they were lost in the uh, removal of uh, the ROM socket. So I have sockets for everything. Ricardo has also included sockets. We'll go into what he sent also along with this, which is also appreciated. Helps me uh, not have to fend off so many of my own parts. So here's the original 68,000. She is the uh, repop kind from God knows where because it doesn't even have any writing on it. Uh, we have some Amiga 3000 Zip RAM, Zip 20, that I don't know. Um, wow. The original uh, ROM, he even sent me a CIA for the one that I had to sacrifice out of my own parts to fix the Titanic. Yeah, that's, that's awesome. Thank you. You didn't have to do that, but I greatly appreciate it. Uh, he's also sent in uh, a socket for the CIA that I burned up in machine pin. Along with, we have a 40 uh, for the ROM. Ow! And that is not a funny one. I'm going to do some diagnostics on the board. I'm going to fire up the old Sprint Layout Viewer on the tiny monitor. Makes the eyeballs work a little bit more. Start going through some basic uh, continuity testing to see what holes I need to repair, who's missing what. When you're all sanded down, when you got the old uh, smooth butter here, it's actually a little harder for me to figure out what's broke because everything's been sanded out. Hopefully I don't have to do these freaking 745s on the Zora bus. They're always fun. It's 1.48 p.m. 
Hey, so welcome back from eh, not too long later, 15 20 minutes. I'm going through the old beep beeps on the sprint layout viewer, and I wanted to give you an important little tip. If you're old like me, and your eyeballs are not what they used to be when you were 20 something years old, and take a photo of your area of damage, and then you can use the old pinch zoom. But a cool thing is, is if I take a photo and I enhance the ISO a little bit, kind of brightens up all the silver, so I can clearly see uh, the vias and what is busted and what needs some love. I do this in small sections, so I can see all the silver here, and you can see which one you're going to have an issue with clearly, versus taking these old Coke bottles through the helmet of Goober down to this board where everything is gold and it just doesn't play well. Maybe I'm colorblind from staring at green and gold all these years. That's just a small tip on what I do to help these puppies focus on those small holes. When I get a board, I like to go around the fuses real quick. That would be a quick continuity beep beep trace on F1, your mouse. Holy crap, it's good. Next is F2. It's back near the RG, uh, the uh, serial port. Good. F3, which is on the back of the CIA, next to F4, and F4, and finally F5 on the RGB and disk drive port. This provides 12 volts for external disk drives. I knew it was too good to be true. F5 is not uh, good. That's probably from removal and insertion during power on. Important safety tip, always power off your old computers when you're unplugging and plugging in peripherals. I know we get in the habit of modern day, but it can screw you up. So again, to sum up, if you're checking fuses here on an Amiga 2000, you have F1, which is your mouse. Okay, that's going to be the plus 5 volt on pin 7 of these two ports. Next is F2, up here on the uh, serial, parallel, whatever. F3 and F4 Pico fuses behind your left CIA and finally F5 which is right in between the RGB and the disk drive port this provides 12 volt to pin 23 for your external larger floppy drives like the A1010 your other floppy drives that rely on the 5 volt will get the power from the other pin that is why you can have a blown F5 fuse and not know it until you plug in like an A1010 drive or something that requires 12 volts. Okay, so as you can see, uh, the resistor pack and a couple caps were in here for the area over here. I don't have an exact match of green for the solder mask. I always use a like a really thick non-metallic fingernail polish. It works really good. I don't have any actual solder mask left, but I do need to cover up this. So what I do is I get a nice little coating on here and I just kind of give it a tickle just ever so lightly. You want to cover it up enough so the copper will be green. It's going to take a couple coats right here. It's a little brighter but the protection value is what I'm looking for. I don't want all of the copper exposed. I do want to mask it. So a couple coats of some nail polish will do just fine. Now it's not going to be perfect. Especially on the VCC and grounds up here we don't want any power lines exposed at all and then we'll go over the entire thing one final time just to make sure we're sealed up and good to go. I'm getting ready to bust out the old solder station because most of the ROM and some of the CPU pins are they're all cut in half. Now a lot of times what I do is I wire from the bottom because you don't want the top to look like yuck as you can see we're green again this is not battery damage this is battery fix I greened a little bit over here this is mainly ground plane the one VCC uh, bus line that runs all the way across the bottom through the first Zorro slot that's a 5 volt rail you don't want that exposed the keyboard DIN connector is also missing, so I've gone ahead and I've placed an order for those. They're just standard PC slash MIDI angled uh, DIN connectors, female. You can still get them there about eight bucks a shot. I ordered a pack of two, so $16, $17 plus shipping. Should be here in about a week, 
I hope. I'm going to go ahead and solder a socket on and a ROM socket on and then we'll start doing continuity testing between the two and I can wire mod the bottom of the board as needed for broken traces. So this is starting to look more like an actual Amiga now with a CPU socket and a ROM. Well, I would go ahead and put the chips in. Now, I'm going to do the continuity tracing, print myself out two sheets, one for the ROM, one for the CPU, or one of both. That way I can write down which pins I need to fix, and then flip that upside down, put it in the sprint layout viewer on the bottom view, and start wire modding things that don't fit. Yay. It's currently 3.25 p.m. I did take a break to go get the old green nail polish and a chocolate bar. Just to show you the fun that's involved with troubleshooting. And at least my way of doing it, because I take breaks. I have a pinout of the 68000 and the ROM. You can get pinouts of anything. And I kind of write on there the direction of the chip, so I know front or back of board, back of board, front of board. And just for now, I'm going to show you one. So I put this on continuity. This Everstart uh, multimeter is plastic. It's okay to leave on the unit. Next, I use Sprint Layout Viewer with the Amiga 2000 files, and I know it's blue, but you will see that when I touch pin 1 of the ROM here, well, pin 1's down here, but let's go this top left pin. Right here's my mouse, so I know that I should have a pin continuity over right here. I should have continuity right to this pin. So if I take my multimeter here and I stick this in the top left pin, I should be able to get a beep like that. So I know that on my ROM, this tells me it goes to A18 or address line 18. I know this one is good, so I'll write a check mark next to it. And on my 68,000, whatever freaking pin that was, I don't know, somewhere up here, I will have to count it, and then I will write a check mark there. I pause or one repeat for all of them. That way, with the ROM bus and the CPU bus is good, you're pretty good at getting a start. It's 3.34 p.m. Hello, it's 4.38 p.m. As you can see by my chicken writing diagram, ouch, that is a lot of letters. That's just the ROM side. What do we got? We got, now, please remember that each pin has two directions. So towards CPU, towards the ICs, we have 15 bad vias in one direction. CPU that I've pinned out with the ROMs so far, most of the stuff from the CPU going towards Zoros are okay. Most. Everything going to the ROM, eh, hit or miss. 11 so far on the CPU bus from the ROM. Yay, it's 4.38 p.m. I'm going to go get a cup of coffee. It's now 5.50 p.m. So I've been working on this for an hour extra than I thought it was. It is currently 10. 28 p.m. on the old Omnibot clock. I've been working on this for quite some time. We had approximately 30 total bad pins between the ROM and the 68,000. Now, most of these were back and forth to each other with a couple just off and into La La Land. Green-ish. I still have to do this area because I was messing with it. I had to put a new 330 ohm resistor, and all I had was 330 kilo ohm, so I, luckily I had some. On the back, we bodge wired all the busted traces and tested continuity between the two. It's a total of 30 solder points. I was able to drag solder fix a couple. Sorry for the helmet. I got the goober helmet on, so there's a shadow. Um, so I was able to drag solder a couple of the pins right off the CPU bus to fix those. So I'd say 28 actual wire points. Not bad. You know, I've had I've had worse. So I am going to clean up the mess. I've been running this solder station off the solar all day, and we're down to 48% battery. Not bad. I try to do all my solder work off solar so it's free and 
or the power supplies themselves, all my testing, my monitor, that computer, it's all off the solar. So it's free. Free power. That's great. I mean, I guess it's free, isn't it? I paid for all the solar stuff and the battery. But in the long run, it's free power. When I'm doing this stuff for free, why not have free power too? Um, we're going to use pin straightener from RetroRewind.ca. There we go. This goes legs up. Uh, it's already 11.07 p.m. So I'm going to not do anything. I'm actually going to unplug this GoTech. I'm going to let this sit like this. I'm running out of solar power because you know, it's dark out. And my battery bank isn't the greatest anymore. Get some rest and come back with a fresh brain and a cup of Okay, so it's been about a week. When I was pinning this massive 30 wires out, uh, 14 off the ROM and 16 off, uh, or 18 actually off of, the, no, 16 off the 68,000 and 14 off the ROM, I missed one. Whoops. Turning it on. So here we go. We're turning it on again. With the ROM, with the thing in the right place, this will now post. 2.0 ROMs, no floppy, so it takes a second. Another Amiga has been saved. Freaking awesome. But we're not done. Just because the board is working doesn't mean everything is working, but we're not done. We still have to check the Zorro uh, compatibility to make sure that's functioning. And if it isn't, 99.641% of the time, it is the 745 Logic chips here, U600 through 605. They control the bus mastering, uh, talking to Buster, the CPU socket to get Zorro auto config and all that magic. Okay, so through the magic of editing, I put my 314 ROM in. I took out the 2.04 ROM. Why? Because I not only want to be able to double mouse button select boot, I want to be able to get the expansion board diagnostics to make sure the Zorro cards are working. For testing, this is done by the way, I'm going to be using the Alpha Data Multiface 3 uh, Parallel Serial Faster Magic card. Why? Because I'm never going to use this card again in my life and uh, I can go like this and bend the little tab up so I can fit it in an expansion slot without worry of the card. So again, I'm going to double mouse button boot to get the screen right here so I can do expansion board diagnostics so I can see if these 745s are working. If they're working I will see the board. They are working thank the Lord because I hate taking out these 745s because they're ALS, they're a little faster, no big deal. The guys right here that control the Zora bus. The bottom two have resistor packs next to them. And that sucks up a lot of braid, and usually you crack one or you can't get it back on right, and it's just nuts. And if you're going to socket it, you have to move those to the bottom. I'm going to be testing this uh, Multivision 2000 flicker fixer that I got from the uh, other sale of my... It has the audio throughs, puts... So that's doing nothing. That's wonderful. Take that out. Nice to know that that's broken before I went and wasted time taking apart another 2000. The beep you're hearing is because it's plugged into charge. If I unplug this, it shuts up. I don't know. Residual RF interference. Audio. Audio works fine. So. That is all I got for repair number two for Mr. Ricardo. Thank you for sending in that bridge board. We're going to look at that shortly in the future. But for now, your second board has been repaired. I'm going to finish with the uh, green solder masking and just get this thing touched up a little bit. Captain tape on the bottom where I got those 31 wires all, or 31 solder points all wired together. You're back on the road. Another Amiga is saved. Thank you guys for watching. Subscribe. Click the little bell so you know when I'm making another video. So thank you guys for watching. I greatly appreciate it. And as always, I hope you learned something.